So now in this video, we're going to do an experiment with the Peltier cooler. So I did a video of this a while ago. It seems to be somewhat popular. And so I figured I would remake it and do a better job. So first off, this is a Peltier cooler. It is ceramic, but uh, there's two dissimilar metals within it that are welded together. And uh, that's pretty much about all that I know about them. But when you run current through them, one of those metals gets hotter, the other one gets cooler. So one side of this plate will get hotter, the other one cooler. And so if we connect the power supply, uh, positive there and negative there, I think that's the side that gets hot and that's the side that gets cold. We need to dissipate the heat, so I have these heat sinks there, but I burnt out a couple of these a long time ago. I haven't been uh, uh, doing anything with them uh, since, really. But uh, So I don't think these heat sinks are adequate. But in any case, that's about enough for what they normally do. In this video, what we're going to do is instead of running current through them to make a difference in uh, temperature, we are going to take a difference in temperature and create a little uh, electricity. So you can see I got alligator clips to the probes of the meter there, and then the other side comes to the wires that go there. And the heat sink I'm just going to use to help keep. The uh, two sides of the plate a different temperature so they're the same temperature now but when I put my hand on it so I'm pushing down there you can see we have a voltage right there and uh, so about 0.1 volts that's about the most I seem to be able to do looks like it was holding pretty steady there so let's get rid of the heat sink and so now heat should be able to transfer through it pretty well and and then kind of stabilize because the wood should uh, kind of insulate it and there you can see we got uh, quite a bit less voltage right there so I think we already saw that what we're doing now is less effective without the heat sink now let's go and measure current so some meters you might have to move the probe but uh, this one everything but high vo uh, current the red probe stays there and so we got milliamps you can see there is some uh, current there there is a temperature difference still between the two sides now I'm gonna push down on it and I was actually uh, quite surprised to see this much current especially after we looked at the voltage that was produced it wasn't much voltage at all but there you can see we got about uh, 10 milliamps of current it looked like it was about to hold uh, steady there now uh, we'll uh, let it go down a little bit equalize the uh, temperature a bit now I'm gonna put my hand on it again and so it was was about 10 I think before now it doesn't look like we're getting as high and it's probably going to drop faster that's because as I said it relies on a temperature difference between the two sides and so now we're gonna step it up even more so I have ice packs and I'm gonna put those on the bottom it's cooling my hand down but uh, there you go so there we we just have the temperature of the air versus the ice pack you can see that uh, we got that current there let's do voltage first we already saw we got the current so the voltage okay now we got to a uh, point two looks like uh, point two five volts looks like it's gonna hold steady there uh, really well and so we don't need the uh, this right now because the ice pack it's going to take a long time before it gets close to the uh, temperature of my my body. So it is dissipating the heat from it uh, quite well just by itself. So let's press again and see how much current we can get. There we go. So I haven't done this test yet. We can see. Looks like okay. Looks like maybe we maxed out about what wasn't it like 40 almost 40 milliamps or was it like 33 I can't remember I'll, uh, I'll let go let them cool off and we'll take a, uh, another look really quick kind of holding my hand let's just do the other hand there we go yeah we broke 40 that's my palm is probably warmer so 45 milliamps of current and let's see what the Oh yeah, the voltage we already saw was, uh, I'll do my other palm now. So yeah, it's my hand is cooling down too fast. There you go. 
at 0.3, but my hand's on the ice pack, so it's going to cool quick. So, in any case, looks like there's actually quite a bit of potential if you have the uh, right setup to produce an actual usable amount of uh, energy. So if you just have something you're cooling down anyways, and uh, you may be able to capture some of that uh, energy that you are just throwing away for the most part. But in any case, you got to experiment and see what your uh, components can do. So I'm actually a little more impressed with this test after we added the ice pack than I thought I was going to be. So I hope you were too. And uh, I'm going to try to come up with some projects where I actually use these as they're intended to be used. When uh, I bought these heat sinks and stuff, I was working a lot and so I didn't have much time to test out before I could make videos and stuff, but now I got more time. So hopefully I come up with something interesting, but I'm pretty sure that uh, these heat sinks are not uh, good enough by themselves. But maybe if you add something else to help dissipate the heat more, maybe it will work better. These aren't terribly cheap either though. So hopefully I can find some uh, good solutions. And obviously if you have a lot of money, you can buy anything you want. And I'm trying to keep stuff within a budget and make videos with stuff within uh, a normal person's budget so in any case thanks for watching and i hope to see you in the next video